Good morning. Welcome to our morning devotions with Pastor Shutton this morning here at our Savior Lutheran on May 21st, 2020. I'm glad to have you here with us on this Thursday morning. I'll tell you, it's been a morning of chaos. I just From the time I got up this morning, I should have realized that things were not going to go the way I intended them. Um, I, I had three phone calls while I was eating my breakfast this morning. One while I had taken the dog outside and left my phone in the in the kitchen and uh, Bonnie had to come and tell me the phone was ringing and uh, here about uh, 9 20 before the devotions were going to start I um uh, Dale Cage dropped in to say hi and uh, of course uh, he's he's undergoing his cancer treatments his radiation treatments and Shirley's in the hospital having surgery on her hip today that she broke earlier this week um I've got the story from Dale behind that but so I just, and I, you know, I, I, I love you guys too, but if one of you is here in front of me and 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 wants and needs to talk to me, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna prioritize on that, and that's never happened before. I mean, uh, so uh, at least since we've been doing this, so it's kind of a weird situation. But um, keep Dale and 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 uh, Shirley in your prayers uh, today. Uh, like I say, Shirley's having her surgery today. So uh, with that, um, welcome. And we're, we're about a half hour behind here. And then I couldn't find the, the link for the scheduled live in Facebook, so I just had to start a live broadcast raw. And then I forgot to start it. I, I was already halfway through the devotion. Where were you? Well, I never pushed the go live button at the bottom. It's just chaos today, just chaos. Um, but it's Deb Fisher's birthday today, uh, so happy birthday, Debbie. And and uh, it is uh, also Mike and uh, Pam Sadler's an- wedding anniversary, so a happy anniversary to them. I, I don't know if we had any other birthdays today. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, just Mike and Mike and Pam's anniversary and, and Debbie's Debbie's. Uh, Debbie's birthday, so happy birthday. Ascension. We're, we're here on, on the 40 days past the resurrection, the day of the ascension of our Lord, uh, where he ascends back into heaven. Our readings for devotion, our devotion today will not be the ascension readings. We used those last night at our, at our Wednesday evening worship service. But um, uh, we will talk about ascension today instead of our, instead of our catechesis. So... Um, I have no idea what I'm doing. Why don't we just get into the liturgy, which which will guide us through the way. So I have my treasury of daily prayer, and if you have a, a hymnal at home, um, we have you have uh, uh, page 295, daily prayer for individuals and families. So good morning, Adam, and good morning, Michael. And good morning, Wayne and Kathy. Kathy, thank you for calling and checking on me. Uh, Renee, good morning, and Leela, good morning. Let's begin here. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Our uh, our psalm today is Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, our 
New Testament reading today comes from Luke chapter 17, beginning at the, the first verse. And he said to his disciples, Temptations to sin are sure to come, but woe to the one through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were cast into the sea than that he should cause one of these little ones to sin. Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. The apostles said to the Lord, Increase our faith. And the Lord said, If you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you would say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Well, any one of you, will any one of you who has a servant plowing or keeping sheep say to him when he has come from in from the field, Come at once and recline at table? Will he not rather say to him, Prepare supper for me, and dress properly, and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you will eat and drink? Does he thank the servant because he did what he was commanded? So you also, when you have done all that you are, were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were cleansed, then one of them, when he saw he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? When was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning, Bonnie. Glad you found your way here. Um, unworthy servants. That's what we are. We're unworthy servants. Right? We're, we're, we're not worthy. There is no worthiness or merit, merit in us that, that receives that, that deserves to receive the forgiveness of God. We deserve only His wrath. We deserve only, only that which Christ suffered on the cross. That's what we deserve. That's what we've earned by our sinful nature. Not just our sins, but the sins of concupiscence that come down to us through our, through our fathers back to Adam. We are unworthy servants. At the end of the day, when we've done the work that the Lord has commanded us, whatever vocation it is that we have, at the end of the day when he says, good job, we have nothing to say, but we are unworthy servants, doing only what was our duty. Right? Luther says, because of, because of the forgiveness that we have in Christ Jesus, it is our duty to thank him and give praise and to serve him. And so we are unworthy servants, having received such great gifts, having received the forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life, which we do not deserve. This is why Jesus can say, when a brother sins against you and repents, you must forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day and turns to you seven times and says, I repent, I'm sorry, I desire to do better. You must forgive him. This is why we, we, we pray in the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. For we unworthy servants have been forgiven much. When I say much, I mean everything. Everything that we have ever done to offend God, to deserve his temporal and eternal punishment has been forgiven everything 
So what is there possibly that one of your brothers or sisters in Christ could do to you that means that you could hold it against him or her? You've been forgiven much. It makes it easy for you to forgive little. Not because you're a good person. Again, you are an unworthy servant. But because Christ has forgiven you everything. And if he can forgive you everything that you have done, every time that you have turned away from him and turned back, he's given you forgiveness. If he's done that, then the little things that happen in the 80 or 85 years of life that we have in this world, you can forgive. It's hard. It's difficult. It's not easy for us to do. But that is why God has given us his Holy Spirit to strengthen us in these things, to call us by his Spirit, enlighten us with his word, so that we might be able to do these things. It's difficult, but he enables it in us by his Holy Spirit. And then we pray that by his grace he would fulfill what we are unable to do. Let's end our meditation on that text with a prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, as your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, ascended into the heavens, so may we also ascend in heart and mind and continually dwell there with him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As I said, today is Ascension Day. Today is, that's the collect for Ascension Day. That's the collect that we used last night for the Wednesday evening service. Um, and this is, this is 40 days after the resurrection, and Christ ascends. And then, and then in another 10 days on, on Pentecost, the Holy Spirit is sent back, the helper that he promised to give us the ability to understand the scriptures and to be enlightened by that word and be called by his gospel. Let me share with you what is, as part of, in, instead of our catechesis today, what is, what is written here in the, in the uh, treasury of prayer in regard to Ascension Day. Ascension Day is the coronation celebration of our Lord as he is proclaimed to be the king of the universe Jesus' ascension to the Father is his entrance to the greater existence beyond the confines of time and space, being no longer bound by the limitations of his state of humiliation. Jesus now sits at the right hand of God, which Luther correctly taught is everywhere, having again taken up the power and authority that were his since before time. Yet our Lord is present with us, who remain bound by time and space. He is with us as true God and true man, exercising his rulership in the church throughout, through the means of grace which he established, his word and his sacraments. We mortals in those means of grace can grasp the king of the universe and receive a foretaste of the feast to come. And that's what it is, right? He's the, 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 the fleshly part of Christ. He has now taken man into himself. Man has become part of God. And this is, this is the coronation ceremony as he ascends into heaven at the end of the book of Luke or at the beginning of the book of Acts as he ascends in clouds. In Luke's gospel, the two men are standing there after he's ascended and they say to the disciples, why are you gazing into heaven? He will return in the same way in which he left in clouds, right? He will be back. Not a, not a, not a um, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'll be back, right? Which he keeps doing with the Terminator movies. Every good Lord, he's he's how old and he's still doing Terminator movies. Anyway, I, the Lord will return one day. It's not ours to know the time or the season, the day or the hour. But he will return, and it's ours to be prepared. That's our duty as unworthy servants, to be prepared when our ascended Lord returns to claim us and his full reign. But now he ascends to heaven bodily into heaven, as Enoch did and as Elijah did. Bodily into heaven to, to take man into himself and yet to be everywhere and everything, to resume that authority he had from the beginning as the Son of God not just 
not just as spirit, but as flesh. What an amazing God we have that, that, that he treats us even as his equals because he made himself equal to us by taking on flesh. Let's continue with the Apostles' Creed. Let us pray, or uh, let us confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And that prayer which our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now we have a problem because you see this, this purple ribbon? This purple ribbon is supposed to be where the prayers are in here. So I've got to reach back and grab my hymnal because I'm not going to try and dig through there. Fortunately, there's a little in my, in my hymnal, there's a little pink spot, which is where the prayers are. So um, I don't have a a prayer for Ascension Day today and my portals of prayer isn't on my desk, but I would guess that if you look in the portals of prayer, there will be a prayer specifically for the day of the Ascension this day. So instead, let us simply have a prayer for peace in the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God of all concord, it is your gracious will that your children on earth live together in harmony and peace. Defeat the plans of those who would stir up violence and strife. Destroy the weapons of those who delight in war and bloodshed. And according to your will, end all conflicts in the world. Teach us to examine our hearts that we may recognize our own inclination toward envy, malice, hatred, and enmity. Help us by your word and spirit to search our hearts and to root out the evil that would lead us to strife and to discord so that in our lives we may be at peace with people. Fill us with zeal for the work of your church and the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which alone can bring that peace which is beyond all understanding. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Luther's little prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord, my friends. Thanks be to God. Well, we've come to the end of our devotion today. My chaos is beginning to minimize. I'm starting to feel a little more confident in myself today and in my schedule, which is kind of the purpose of spending time in God's Word, right? To bring us, not bring us down, but to, to bolster us for the day, to give us strength as we, as we go about our day of doing these things. So God's blessings to you, and um, enjoy Ascension Day in the sun, right? Take a minute this evening, look at Portals of Prayer and see the Pray for, Prayer for Ascension Day there. And um, uh, prepare your hearts and minds for Friday morning, uh, which will come. And um, stay safe, right? And we will, we will see you in the morning for our devotions. Hopefully, hopefully, 
on schedule tomorrow at 9.30. But if not, don't worry. When the time comes, I will find my way back here and we'll spend this time together. The peace of the Lord be with you always, my friends. Amen.